wearing a similar prayer, maybe not quite the same thing, but often that Holy Spirit shows up sometimes. Especially today, because today is really, and it takes hold of our history. And anyone who knows me very well knows I struggle to get the years right when I talk about history. I remember in my Christian history class in, in a seminary one time, in those classes, you go all semester, and then your grade is based on the answer you give to two questions. Right? And in an hour and a half, you write the answer to two questions, and that shows whether you learned it. So no pressure. And I rode along, and um, I got my paper back, and the teacher that had written in the margin, well, you're off by a thousand years, but you got the point. <laughs> <laughs> I was okay. What some year in the past that I had to do. The thing we encounter today, we really have two things going on, and I really want to cover both of them. First is, what does scripture do for us? From the collect, we hear, read, mark, inwardly digest scripture that we might be changed by it. And along comes this gospel that is a prime example of what scripture does in our life. So let's talk about this little story from Luke. He's answering the question, when? When will you come back? When, only they're asking, when will the temple fall? When? And um, a lot of us kind of have that question after 2,000 years. We're like, dude, how about today? Come back today. This would be a good game. <laughs> so when occurs to all Christians, and some people, Luke is also addressing the fact that for some people, that when morphs into an if. After 2,000 years, we could be forgiven if we are thinking, if Jesus comes back. It's been a long time, right? Do we live our lives every day as though his return were imminent? No. We kind of learn to live betwixt and between. And Luke wrote for us as well as for his original audience. Let's look at how. They're at the temple. And Jesus, they are saying to Jesus, wow, holy, look at this place. All these beautiful stones, all these gifts that rich people have donated to God. Isn't it gorgeous? And Jesus says, well, actually, no stone will be left one on top of another. And they say, when will that happen? And how will we know it's happening? Now, the first thing to note here is that Luke is not in talking about the end times. For the end times, you have to go to Matthew and Mark. Because Matthew and Mark both put this in terms of what will happen at the end of time. But Luke's just talking about now. And he does something with Jesus in this story to show something about who Jesus is. He has Jesus tell them all the things that will happen before the temple falls. That's, that's the only thing he's answering. What will happen before the temple falls? How will we know? He's answering that. Because Jesus is trustworthy in his word. Remember the word that created the world? He's trustworthy in what he's saying. Luke is reminding his readers, you can trust what this man says. And what he tells them about what's going to unfold does. And we can trust the rest of his message as well. First thing he tells them is, when they say, when will this happen? He says, before it happens, you will be persecuted. You will be handed over. You will be betrayed by those close to you. You will be hated in my name. Well, let's all sign up. <laughs> Gee, that's not really great news. And the second little piece that he gives them was 
saved for a few minutes. Then he says, um, there will be destruction of the temple for Luke, a sign of Babylon, a sign of empire. The other two talk about how big it is. Matthew and Mark talk about how big it is, or it's amazing that it exists, but Luke talks about how fine it is. Now this temple was increased by Herod. We know Herod is a traitorous king, right? But um, Herod was known in his time and in non-scriptural history as a great builder. He loved to build, and he actually doubled the temple grounds starting in 19 BC and, that, and finished its main part in 18 months, but then kept on until 64 BC. Always building, adding to the area of the temple, making huge, beautiful porticos where people could come to pray or speak or have markets. We see in Acts the disciples doing all those things in the temple. And then, finished maybe 62, 64 AD, it was torn down in 70. So it lasted less than 10 years. So the first thing he says is that the temple will be gone. The first sign after persecution is false messiahs will rise up. In Jesus' time, in his day, there were at least 15 people walking around saying they were the Messiah, including him, saying they were the Messiah. There's a great list online you can look at. But they said, I am the one who is to come. 14 other people besides Jesus in his lifetime were saying that. Don't follow them, Jesus says. And insurrections and wars will happen. In the year before the temple was torn down, 69 AD, they had four emperors in Rome. Insurrection, war, change in government, it was chaos in Rome. And he says there will be famines and plagues. Acts, remember Acts being the second half of Luke? Acts reports a plague in the time of Claudius. That was 47 AD. And an earthquake, a large earthquake in Philippi in 50 AD. All those things happened before the temple was dismantled. All of it happened before. He's talking specifically about historical events that we can verify. So he's not talking here, he's not talking about the end of time. He's talking about, here's how you'll know. And no one knows the exact time, but here's how you'll know. And he's right. He predicts it, and he's right. One of the crucial things in the Bible as a whole, and in Paul especially, is a false prophet. We all know some in our days. A false prophet. And prophets don't, in fact, predict the future. But what they do is tell the truth. Now, Jesus is way more than a prophet. Don't hear me say he's just a prophet. But he tells the truth. And when you tell the truth about a situation, it tends to happen. When you have the wisdom and the insight to say, oh, I see how well, this is going to play out, it tends to happen that way. One of the reasons Jonah was so mad is God changed his mind and he was a false prophet, as it turned out. Jesus is right. He says, this is how this is going to play out, and it does. He can be trusted in that word. Let's hear the other word he gives us today. The other thing he says to us about all of that, because there's the truth, plagues and famines and chaos. Oh, and don't forget the skies. Josephus has a record of a great ball of fire that burned in 69 from in the sky. And comets that came across. Jesus says there will be portents and signs in the skies. And there were 
and their world. Let's remember who's talking to us. Let there be light, and there was. Let there be animals, and there was. Let there be humanity, and there was. That's who's speaking. And he's telling us what will happen before the temple falls. And he's telling us how we live in this day. Because the broader truth that he speaks is this. Every empire will fall. Every empire always has. Every empire always will. Until the day he comes and establishes his kingdom. When there will be justice and mercy on the earth. Then that will be the final reign and it will not be hierarchical. And we will all be rulers. Yeah. Some of us should worry. <laughs> we will all be rulers in that place and we will all be equal. And the idea of some being above others will be gone. In fact, the low will be lifted up and the high will be toppled in his truth, in his world. So we watch it all around us. We see famine. We see chaos. We see plagues. We care about the people affected because they are our brothers and sisters and children of God and we love them and want what's best for them, whoever they might be. And we cry out and we act and here's what he says, you will have a chance to testify. The truth he tells us, you will have a chance That's why we come in. That's why we go out. So we can carry the Lord and our Savior out to the world. So that we can be fed with divine life and shine in that light in our communities, in our homes, wherever we go. You will be given the chance to testify in the middle of all this chaos. Don't worry. Don't worry about how you're going to do it. I will show you. I will give you words. I will give you wisdom. It's a beautiful message from Luke. For the people who heard him, the persecuted community that gathered around, that heard what he first wrote, and for us. And for the people who are not yet Christian, who will live after us until the day when Christ's reign reigns. And what's his final word? I love it. Not a hair on your head will perish. Not a hair on your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your soul.